Hi everyone, I'm Phil from statisticsmentor.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an error bar chart and also how to interpret one. Now, an error bar chart is useful when we are doing ANOVA analysis. And it's useful, this graph is useful to compare, give you a graphical representation to compare the means across groups. If we're using ANOVA terminology, compare means across the levels of a factor. Now, for this demonstration, we have got this data here. It's an experiment. Now, for this experiment, to create an error bar chart, we need two things. We need a grouping variable and we also need the measurements. Now, the measurements should be on the scale or continuous level. So here we have time. Time taken to complete a task where the participant is given one of three drinks. So the factor here is drink and that since there are three drinks we say there are three levels, uh, three categories. So the question is, can we? does the error bar chart help to sh sh uh, shed light on whether there's a difference in mean kind of completion time to complete a task given one of three drinks? To get that error bar chart, go to graphs. Now there's two options, use the chart, new chart builder button or use the legacy dialogues which is the menu from the historic versions of SPSS. Well, let's use chart builder. Okay, okay. Now, okay, we'll see something like this. By default selected on bar, which is what we want, and then on the sub menu we select what we want. Now if we're not quite sure what we want, we'll just kind of put a mouse over it and a display box comes up telling us what it will give us. So the error bar chart is this one, simple error bar. Grab it, so left click on the mouse, drag it up, release. Okay, we'll get this picture if you've done it correctly. If you haven't, try it again. Now the y-axis goes the measurements in the, on the continuous scale. Here it's time, so we drag that over here. And drink. Now drink, now drink should be um, it is the categorical variable, it's one of three levels. But notice here on the scale it's got ruler which means that it's interpreting it as if it was as if it was, uh, were a scale, a continuous variable. If we drag that down there we can still get the error bar chart but it's better in this case to tell it that it is on a nominal scale. So we click on drink and right click to bring up this menu and then we'll go nominal. All right. You can see how the picture now has changed to these three circles to represent its categorical drag drink now into the x-axis. Just to say that you could try this as well without changing the drink and you'll see what the difference is. Okay, so pretty much we can click OK from here, but to show you that we can do more stuff, look. In the element properties box, which comes along with it, we can select the statistic to show. And we could say what we can tell it what we want the error bars to represent. So by default, it's the representing the 95% confidence interval. If you want something slightly more, you can change the confidence level of confidence. Okay, you can also do it by standard error and standard deviation. But confidence interval, this is natural interpretation, so we're going to keep it with that. By default, it gives you that anyway, so you didn't have to do much there. Click OK. Here you go. So, what we see is that the measurements, the mean time, is along the vertical axis. Horizontal axis tells us the type of drink. Drink one, drink two, drink three. And the, each of these represents an error bar. For, uh, okay. Now, it looks a bit like one of those fighters, three fighters from the Star Wars movie, doesn't it? Huh. Anyway. Let's take one bar like this. Now, the vertical line represents the interval of the confidence interval. So, if we take this bottom one, go along there, that tells us that at 95% confidence interval, the lower limit is just below 20 and the upper limit is above 20. And that round circle there, where the fighter sits, to fly the thing. 
anyway, that circle there represents the mean. So of the mean time to complete the task after taking drink one. So really long there, it's around 20. All right. Now, the idea is that if any of these overlap, so if these error bars overlap with any other ones, it suggests there's no difference in the mean times between the two. Remember that the error bar chart, use it to compare the means between groups. So if we look at, there's only, let's see, you can cut possibilities here to compare um, the means of drink one to, to drink two, drink one to drink three, drink two to drink three. They're the possibilities, things we can compare. So if we compare one to two, you can see that they don't overlap, so that suggests there's a difference in the means with people drinking drink two taking longer to complete the task than taking drink one. And if we compare drink one to drink three, we can see that they're pretty much there's overlapping here, so suggesting there is no difference in the mean time to complete a task drinking one and drinking three. I.e. there's no difference in the on the effect of time to complete the task between drink one and drink three. Uh, drink two and drink three there don't seem to be an overlap suggesting there is a difference in the effect of drink two and drink three on time to complete a task with drink two again taking uh, having a t making the person take longer on average than drink three. So I think today I've been drinking drink two taking quite a while to do this video. Okay, now what's there to say? Oh yes, point out here the error bar is 95% confidence interval. It's telling you it's the 95% confidence interval. Right, I hear some of you screaming to me saying, Phil, uh, it, but uh, look at the scale, you know, everything's clumped together, it's not easy to see. Well, I definitely agree with you there. Oh, in a great big void down here, there's no data there, but it's starting on a scale from zero, you see. So if we can somehow get it to start on a higher scale, like from 15, hopefully then these, the graph will be a lot more clearer about the differences. So how can we do that? Well, we can do that. We double-click on the graph to bring up the chart editor. Now we double-click on any of the numbers on the hor on the vertical scale here. Okay. When you do that, you can see yellow halos around all these numbers on the vertical axis and you get the properties box coming up. Now we go on the t scale tab look at here it says minimum values going from minimum of 0 maximum up to 25 uh, representing here 0 up to 25 we want it to start higher say 15 so pick any number so long as the number is below the minimum lowest number of these guys obviously the lowest number here is to be around 20, just below 20, so we're picking 15 to be quite certain. 15, and we go apply. Hopefully, I, yes, look at that instant, much improvement. Can you see now? It's much clearer now, the difference that these 1 and 2 competence intervals do not overlap, 1 and 3 overlap, 2 and 3 don't overlap. In any case, this is a lot more, it looks a lot better. So we can close this window, and there you go. Lovely. All right, so I hope that's been helpful. Error bar charts, nothing to be afraid of.